Hey church, and welcome to this week's small group. Now on this last Sunday, we asked the question, how do we grow in our faith? And the answer was, invest in biblical wisdom. We talked about King Solomon. But before we get into all of that, I want to ask you two questions in your small group. In what ways is wisdom better than money, better than power, and better than long life? But if wisdom truly is better than those things, what are the limitations of wisdom? So on Sunday, we talked about King Solomon. But in spite of all the wisdom that God gave King Solomon, what we're going to find out today is that Solomon still failed. And today we will look at Solomon's failure. Why? So that we can actually become wiser than King Solomon. So we may not have all of his wisdom, but at least by the time this study is done, we'll know how not to fail like King Solomon did. So what I, want, what I want you to start out with is read 1 Kings verses, uh, chapter 11, verse 1 through 4. What did God say about what would happen to the Israelites who married outside the covenant? And how did Solomon's choice to marry outside of the covenant affect him? Now for the record, I do not believe that the Bible condones polygamy. In fact, I believe from the very first few pages of Genesis, it's clear that God intended for one man to marry one woman. The Israelites, who were God's chosen people, had just chosen to be like everyone else in adopting this practice, which was common in those times. What I want you to notice is in the Bible, we never find polygamy working out well. I'd like to say that having one great woman in your life is a total blessing, but any more than one is probably a curse. And I know all the women out there are going, yep, mm-hmm. Read 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 5 through 8. How did Solomon's changed heart affect his leadership of Israel? And if this story was a movie... Describe the next scene you would expect to see after the events of these verses. After these verses, I would be expecting God's wrath, you know, striking Solomon dead or striking him at least with some venereal disease because that's what he deserved, right? Let's read 1 Kings chapter 11, 9 through 13 to see what God actually did. Why does God respond with anger to Solomon's disobedience? And what does God promise to do as a result of Solomon's disobedience? And is God justified in doing this? Next, I want you to ask, why does God give grace to Solomon? Does Solomon deserve this grace? And in what ways does God give us the same grace that he gives Solomon? And what's the source of this grace? You know, sometimes I'm, up, I'm tempted to be all upset about King Solomon. I kind of wish that God would have punishment, punished him right then and right there. That's what he deserved. But isn't it funny how we always want justice for everyone else? but we really want grace for ourselves? Make no mistake, the source of the grace that we receive is Jesus Christ himself. Next, I want you to read 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 26 through 40. Who is Jeroboam? And for what purpose did God raise him up? Now, full disclosure, Jeroboam was going to end up leading the, the people of North Israel further down the path of idolatry. He was a wicked man. But why did God give ten of the tribes to Jeroboam if God knew how wicked Jeroboam was going to be? What I want you to know is that Jeroboam served a purpose. He ultimately showed us 
why we need a Savior so much. But notice how God still gave him a choice. Jeroboam chose to do the wrong thing even though God had told him what the right thing actually was. God gave him wisdom in this one particular area and Jeroboam chose to disobey the wisdom. You know, King Solomon is the same. He is such a tragedy because he was endowed with so much wisdom, but ultimately failed in the important things. How was it that King Solomon was so wise, but yet failed God so catastrophically? And what can we do to be different from King Solomon? The whole point of this story is to be wiser than King Solomon. So how can we be different? When you answer those questions, I want to encourage you to close in prayer. Ask God to give us wisdom, but also to give us the strength to apply that wisdom to our lives. And I want to remind you, invest in biblical wisdom. Have a great rest of your small group, and we'll see you on Sunday.